There we go. All right. Let's do this. Let's have some fun. <clears throat> Gonna start in one second, guys. Here we go. Oh, I got some good stuff tonight. <laughs> Start in one second, guys. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, I got some good stuff tonight. I got some volume issues here. All right, we'll get it going. Guys, welcome to the show. Gonna start in one second here. I'm gonna get into a little bit about Eric Schneiderman, uh, the Trump Iran deal today. That was pretty darn cool, didn't you think? President kicking ass and taking names. All right, we're gonna do that in just one second here. As soon as I get the volume down on this. Uh, got Gina joining me here. Hold on, uh, we'll we'll get it going. Here. Let's let's go ahead and just back up and and start over again. All right, here we go. One, two, three. The Rob Carson Show for a Tuesday. We're having some problems. I apologize. Let's try it again. It's the Rob Carson Show. Are you ready to be pod smacked? I hope you're ready. Now, here's Rob Carson. Welcome to the show. It is a uh, Tuesday. It is hot in uh, Kansas City. I hope uh, that you are comfortable wherever you are. We've got a bunch of stuff to get to. A uh, brand new parody, actually, about this Eric Schneiderman, the uh, New York Attorney General, and, uh, you know, the latest in a string. By the way, he replaced, uh, what, uh, Elliot Spitzer? <laughs> who also was a uh, sex pervert. He hired a, uh, a, a you know, a, a prostitute and the whole deal. I don't know what is is about Democrats. I mean, listen, Republicans do it too. I get it. I absolutely get it. But honestly, um, wow. Just w- this story is amazing. And, and when you think about this, this is another story, guys, of everybody knowing about it and nobody doing anything about it. Okay, you had uh, Bernie Weinstein, Matt Lauer, Charlie Rose, this guy, unbelievable, uh, and, and everybody knew about it. And Ronan Farrow just does the obvious. I don't know if it took much journalism to do this, right? Hello, Joe. Hello, Gina. Good to have you guys here. And hello, of course, Liberty One. Follow us, LibertyOneTV.com, LibertyOneTV.com. Become a member, will you? Become a member. Should I start with the uh, Eric Schneiderman or the Donald Trump? I'm going to talk about the Donald Trump. Let's talk about the Donald Trump, the Iran nuclear deal. Because um, today was pretty epic. Today he rescinded the Obama administration's nuclear deal. And I think it's kind of interesting because, and I heard Limbaugh talking about this today, and he's perfectly right, that this is... um, Basically, uh, rescinding the Obama administration. This is a rebuke of the Obama administration in so many ways. You've got environmental policy. uh, You've got uh, uh, Obamacare. um, And now you have this. It's a rebuke. It is a rebuke of the Obama administration. It is uh, a quorum with regard to the Obama administration. Uh, this, This is, and this is the reason why he was elected. And this is why it's working. And this is why it is working. Today, he made an announcement today in the White House. And we'll, we'll just uh, listen to it, and I'll, I'll chime in occasionally here. But here he goes. My fellow Americans, today I want to... Also mention the Paris Climate Accord. He got us out of that. He's doing what we asked him to do. And this is what's driving so many people nuts is in, in D.C., He's draining the swamp. He's he's flipping things upside down. I absolutely love it. Update the world on our efforts to prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. This is what he's done in North Korea, by the way. All right. North Korea already had nukes. 
North Korea, because Donald Trump has said, I've got a bigger button and mine works. And he came down on China and now they're talking peace and now they're talking, taking apart their nuclear program. Right now, the hammer is coming down on Iran. And it's not just about uh, rescinding the nuclear deal. It's about sanctions. It's about going after the mullahs who run this damned country and turning this stuff around. I love this. Ronald Reagan did this with the Soviet Union. Why in the hell can't we do it with these, these oligarchies in the Middle East? Why can't we do it? Peace through strength. That's what it's all about. So we take apart this nuclear deal, which gave Iran $100 billion, which they used to fund terrorists. And we got rid of this Neville Chamberlain kind of uh, uh, domestic po- or, 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 uh, foreign policy that we had. And he just trashed it, tore it up, threw it away. And I, I have a feeling, and I'd love to know your thoughts. You think it's going to work? I think it's going to work brilliantly. In 2015, the previous administration joined with other nations in a deal regarding Iran's nuclear program. This agreement was known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or (laughs) JCPOA. Which, it should be called the JCPOS, to be quite honest. In theory, the so-called Iran deal was supposed to protect the United States and our allies from the lunacy of an Iranian nuclear bomb a weapon that will only endanger the survival of the Iranian regime. All Iran wants to do with their nuclear program is to build bombs. Okay. This nuclear deal continued to allow them to develop their ICBM program. What are you going to do? What are you, what are you going to put on an ICBM? An ice cream truck? (laughs) What are you going to, what are you going to put an ICBM when when you've got, uh, you know, Israel not too far away? Honestly, what are you going to do? What, why, why would they build, why would they continue their ICBM program? I'm just so gosh darn sick of this Democrat Neville Chamberlain bullcrap foreign policy. We saw it during the Clinton administration when Madeleine Albright went over and gave Kim Jong Il a freaking basketball signed by Michael Jordan. Enough with this crap, guys. Enough with this crap. Peace through strength. This is Reagan-esque, okay? This is beyond Reagan-esque. This is even better than Reagan. You may disagree. Hello, Stephanie. Uh, you may disagree. I say it's even better than Reagan. It's not as articulate as Reagan. <laughs> I'm going to give you that. But I think it's better than Reagan. Reagan. He's gotten more accomplished with the economy and with foreign policy in a year and six months or whatever than Reagan did by this time. And and nothing against Reagan, honestly. I I feel like, you know, I'm committing sacrilege with a lot of conservatives. If I I, I talk about Ronald Reagan and anything but a uh, kind of an idolic um, perspective, nothing against Reagan. I, I, I really, really respect the man and he did a lot of amazing things. He and Pope John Paul, they helped bring down the Soviet Union. They did. But at the same time, this guy, this, this, this guy right here, this guy, he's, he's getting, he's getting stuff done. He's getting stuff done and he's using the, the power and the prestige of the United States of America to say, you know what? We're tired of being be slapped by the third world. We're tired of being be slapped. We're tired of being the good guys right into the rescue and then feeling like we need for some reason. You know, here, here's, here's the United States. Okay. Forest fire. Okay. Here's Iran. Stick match. Why are we afraid of them? Why are, Why did we feel like we needed to be, oh, we don't want them to get a nuclear weapon. Oh, we don't. Yeah, you know, we got about a thousand. We got a couple thousand of them. If you try anything with your nuclear weapon, we will nuke you to glass. We will nuke your deserts to glass, folks. So why are we afraid of them? Why do we feel like we needed to give them 100 million? To, oh, please don't make a nuke. Please don't make a nuke. Now, you use our intelligence to find out where these uh, these uh, uh, uranium enrichment plants are, and you bomb the snot out of them. 
And if that doesn't work, you cripple their economy. That's what's happening in North Korea. That's what's happening. And China tried to sneak oil in and everything. We used our sat- satellite surveillance and said, China, knock it off. China, knock it off. Or we're going to impact you too. And there's tariffs on China now. And China's getting back in line again. More from the, the Trumpster. In fact, the deal allowed or ran. To continue enriching uranium and over They're not doing it for power, folks. Time. They're not doing it for to, to light the, you know, the, ca- the, the camel lights or the tent lights or whatever the hell they got over there. Reach the brink of a nuclear breakout. The fact is, this was a horrible one-sided deal that should have never... Why? Because it was put together by Barack Obama and fellow left-leaning de- uh, liberals. Ever. Ever. And Democrats been made it didn't bring calm it didn't bring peace and it never will you cannot until iran party it's hot in my studio it gets hot in this in the summer here you cannot negotiate with a radical mullah driven country that's main existence is to create a caliphate to take a caliphate to take over the world and to destroy israel Okay, you know, if you if you had the, the mullah, whatever the hell, he, the leader of uh, uh, Iran saying, OK, well, let's do kind of a Menaka Begin uh, Sadat thing and shake hands with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. They, maybe, but it's 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 foolhardy. As long as that regime is in charge, they cannot have nuclear weapons. They cannot have a nuclear program. Not only do you cripple them economically, you bomb the snot out of them. You bomb the snot out of the facilities. And we know where they are. I am announcing today that the United States will withdraw from the Iran nuclear deal. America will not be held hostage to nuclear... That's kind of an interesting take, because think about what Iran did to a bunch of hostages. What was it, from 1977 to 1980, 1978 to 1980? I was a kid, right? But Iran... It took Americans hostage for a very long time. Ronald Reagan took office. They said, okay, okay, we'll, we'll give them back. Blackmail. We will not allow American cities to be threatened with destruction. And we will not allow a regime that chants death to America. Amen! To gain access to the most deadly weapons on earth. And you don't give them a pallet with $100 billion on it. Powerful sanctions will go into full effect. I if the it. regime continues its nuclear aspirations, I love it. It will have bigger problems than it has ever had before. <laughs> Thank you. There you go. There's the Trumpster. Come on now. You don't, you know what? Here's it. You don't poke a pit bull with a stick. You don't poke a pit bull with a stick. And that's what the world has been doing. Although uh, we had like a, I don't know what the hell we had, a Bichon Frise. When uh, when Barack Obama was uh, president, and this is this is not uncommon for Democrats, guys. This is the way it is. It's it's placating. It's it's this. And I'll tell you, it is about the mantra: give peace a chance. It is about the you know the bumper sticker that they have on Prius that says coexist, coexist on it. You can't coexist when some people in the world want to kill you. That's it. By the way, that's on. I've got that on one of my uh, conservatives, one of my conservative uh, T-shirts. Uh, I literally have one on that says, "It says um, you can't coexist with people who want to kill you. You can't." All right. Here's some of the other ones: Apor- adorable, deplorable, veganism is an eating disorder. Uh, just go to uh, uh, tpublic.com/slash uh, conservatives, or just look up conservatives at tpublic.com. You'll see it. You can't coexist when people want to kill you. Give peace a chance. War is over. Merry Christmas. You know, bull crap. It can't happen when you've got people in the world who want to kill you and take your property, kill your children. There's nobody in Iran. Why would we give $100 billion to a company that would like to see America or to a country who would like to see America wiped off the gosh darn map? Why are we so afraid? Of a guy with a match. When we have a, a bonfire, why are we afraid of that? Why do we feel we need to? You know what? 
<clears throat> here's what you do you to the to the world's dictators to the world uh the, these these terrorists uh, kim jong-un iran put them out like a cigarette in the butt of your heel that's what you do we have the clout we have the power to do it you know and and, and iran of course is, is reacting uh they're you're going to regret this really really how are we going to regret this you want to try something on us you want to get bombed to dust you you want you want what happened in Iraq to happen to you? Are you out of your nut? You have nothing. You are nothing. You are nothing but a punk ass little little uh, radical Islamic state. And we don't have to take this crap anymore. We don't we don't have to. We don't have to. We don't have to be the elephant that is afraid of the mouse. Right? Gina says, "Amen." Rob Bertram's joining me tonight. Hello. So I think it's wonderful. I, I think it's absolutely wonderful. I'm so... Why Why are Democrats so afraid of these little piss-ant countries? Why are Democrats so afraid of these piss-ant countries? And you know what? Neville Chamberlain, at least Germany, was you know building something, and they were maybe an imminent threat, and he believed that uh, he had somehow uh, gotten rid of it. He was wrong. Iran might be a threat with a nuke. I get that. I get it. A few years down the road. But before they have it, uh, let's, first of all, uh, sanction the hell out of them. And if we have to, bomb the hell out of them. <clears throat> okay. So this guy, Eric Schneiderman, the uh, New York Attorney General, champion of the hashtag me too movement this is unbelievable the state's highest ranking law enforcement uh, officer one of the latest democrats and i'm not saying this doesn't happen with republicans don't get me wrong let's talk about roy moore although roy moore he was he had a pension for teenage girls years and years ago but um a lot of these people are democrats harvey weinstein uh charlie rose tom brokaw now Tom Brokaw, NBC News. You know, it's amazing how somebody could uh, make a living in, with such a speech impediment. Tom, Tom, hold on. <clears throat> Tom Brokaw, NBC Nightly News. Eh, it's not very good. Hello, Joni. Nice to see you. Um, I'm going to play a little parody about uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Schneiderman done by a friend of mine named Jim uh, Gossett. He is brilliant, and I, I, it was really funny because today I wrote him and said, dude, we've got to do a parody to Spider-Man about Schneider-Man. He sent me this and said it was already done. Enjoy it! Laugh, everybody, and share, please, on Facebook. The Rob Carson Show. Schneider-Man, Schneider-Man abuses women whenever he can. Look at Cuomo playing dumb. He protected this worthless bomb. He should go down with Schneider-Man. Schneider-Man would like to thank CNN for not mentioning his party affiliation. Schneider-Man, Schneider-Man, he had to ruin the Donald plan. He got caught with his pants down. Now they've run him out of town. They knew, knew about Schneider-Man. He framed man a foot for a 12-year-old crime. But he's the one who will be doing time. Schneider man, Schneider man, biggest pervert in the land. Women want to <laughs> see him pay. Lock the cell, throw the key away. Look out, Look out. you're finished, Schneider man. That is good. Another swap creature breaks to dust. <laughs> Don't you love winning? Oh, that is fantastic. That is my buddy Jim Gossett. He is a friggin' genius. Schneiderman, Schneiderman. Um, I will post that. I, I will try to post that on my on my Facebook page of Rob Carson Show, okay? All right. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. All right, sorry. So anyway, listen to this this creep bastard, okay? He is a uh uh, apparently, listen to this, he was trying to get compensation for the victims of Harvey Weinstein last month when the Times and, uh, and uh, uh, the New York, what was it, uh, who, do, who did this story today? Anyway, 
Uh, they were awarded a joint Pulitzer Prize for coverage of sexual harassment. Snyderman issued a con- congress- congress- <laughs> congratulatory tweet praising the brave women and men who spoke up about sexual harassment. They endured at the hands of powerful men. This, this is, this is just. I mean, honestly, <clears throat> how do you, how do you do this? Remember, um, wasn't it uh, Broca? Well, no, 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 no. Matt Lauer. Who did he talk to about sexual harassment? And I mean, you've got to have an enormous amount of hubris to be a sexual abuser and then be a champion for women. Be a sexual abuser for, behind the scenes and then be a champion for women out front. Now, with Democrats, you can do that for years. We, we found out with Brokaw. Did you know they actually told women to be quiet with Brokaw? They told people, they told women, don't go after Schneiderman because he's going after Trump and we don't want to screw it up. Did you know that? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. There's a lot to this story. There is a lot to the story by Ronan Farrow, by the way. Four women. He has had romantic relationships. I don't know if you know rape is romantic, but anyway. Or encounters. They accuse Schneiderman of having subjected them to non- non-consensual physical violence. All have been reluctant to speak out of fear of reprisal. He even threatened to kill people. Michelle Manning Barish, Tanya Selvaratnam, have told the New Yorker on record... They allege he repeatedly hit them, often drinking, frequently in bed, and never without their never with their consent. This is really effed up, dudes. I mean, this is this is messed up. This guy is. This is a movie. This is a horror movie script. This is a horror movie script. Listen, one of them, Salvaratum, no, both said they they eventually sought medical attention after having been slapped hard across the ear and face, and choked. Selva Rotnam says Schneiderman warned her he could have her fallen and her phones tapped, and both say he threatened to kill them if they broke up with him. Third romantic partner, romantic partner, that's such crap, says she's too frightened to uh, come, come forward. Fourth woman says Schneiderman made an advance to her when she rebuffed him. He slapped her across the face with such force it left a mark that lingered the next day. What the hell? This is a, this is a pattern of behavior. This is a pattern of behavior. Harvey Weinstein. Harvey wants you to do the same thing. Stay in here while I masturbate into a plant. Watch me shower. This is, the, this is a pattern of behavior. This is sickening. This is, this is what he did. He would sweepingly hit a woman in the head. Steinemann said, in the privacy of intimate relations, I have engaged in role playing. Yeah, I'm a rapist and murderer and other consensual sexual activity. I have not assaulted anyone. I have never engaged in non-consensual sex, which is a line I would not cross. Who believes this shite? Schneider is active as on, behalf, on behalf of feminist causes, has increasingly won him praise from women's groups. On May 1st, the New York-based National Institute for Reproductive Health. And the only reason this is all he is celebrated is because he says, I don't mind it if women have abortions, probably because I impregnated him and I don't want to, you know, support the baby. Right? little bit of that going on. Hi, Frank Urban. What's going on? He says if a woman cannot control her body, she's not truly equal. Well, uh, is controlling her body smacking her upside the head till she's nearly unconscious? Manning Barish, one of the victims, says if you cannot, uh, you, you cannot be a champion of women, you are hitting them and choking them in bed and calling them effing whores. Salva Rottenham describes Schneiderman as a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde says that seeing him lauded as a supportive woman was, it made her sick. And that was one of the reasons why they came forward. That was one of the reasons why these women came forward. They just couldn't take it anymore. Manning Barris said uh, they were together. They'd been drinking. He backed her up to the edge of the bed. All of a sudden, he just slapped me open face with great force across the face, landing a blow directed on my ear. It was horrendous. It just came out of nowhere. My ear was ringing. I lost my balance, fell backward on the bed. I sprang up. But at this point, there's very little room between the bed and him. I got up to try to shove him back or take a swing, and he pushed me down again. Then he used his body to hold me down and began to choke me. The choking was hard. It was really bad. I kicked. I, I, in every fiber, I felt I was being beaten by a man. Now, these are, these are left 
leaning liberal women who are uh, abortion supporters and and Democrats and feminists. And many of them let this abuse go on for months. This abuse women syndrome. I get it. My mom was one. You know, I get it. My mom wasn't physically abused. There were other ways to abuse. Manning Barris said that Snyderman also took uh, prescription tranquilizers. Often asked her to refill a prescription she had for Xanax so she could he could uh, reserve about half of the pills for him. When Schneiderman was, uh, this is according to Tanya Selvarotnam, when Schneiderman was violent, he often made sexual demands. He was obsessed with having a threesome. Well, who isn't? Uh, and said it was my job to find the woman. She's a uh, 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 Sri Lankan. She has brown skin. Sometimes he'd tell me to call him master, and he'd slap me until I did. He started calling me his brown slave and demanding that I repeat that I was his property. What a sick S-O-B. S-O-B P-O-S. This isn't 50 Shades of Grey, Frank Urban. This is this is 50 Shades of sick ass person. The, uh, the abuse ex- esca- escalated. Schneiderman not only slapped her across, across the face, often four or five times back and forth with his hand, he also spat on her and choked her. He was cutting off my ability to breathe. We could barely have sex without him beating me. Schneiderman is a misogynist and a sexual sadist. Well, that sounds like it. The emotional and verbal abuse started increasing. He told her to get plastic surgery to remove scars on her torso that resulted from an operation to remove cancerous tumors. Jeez Louise. This SOB needs to go to jail. Just like Bill Cosby is going to, Bill Cosby is going to go to jail. I don't think you can get jello pudding at the prison, the prison commissary. I'm not sure. Un- be believable unbelievable we may have already heard this today but donald trump said uh, in 2013 he predicted that schneiderman was going to go bye-bye said wiener is gone spitzer is gone next will be lightweight ag eric schneiderman is he a crook wait and see worse than spitzer or wiener don't you think this is the worst thing you ever heard i mean we we know about bill clinton juanita broderick schneiderman made him look like a piker like a piker, right? Unbelievable. Might have to hear. We're going to have to hear that Schneiderman uh, parody again, don't you think? At some point here, I'm going to have to play that again. That that's that's really really good. I'm going to play it right now. I'm going to go ahead and get it set up here because I think we should play it again before the end of the show. I think it's wonderful. I think it is absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Now, speaking of wonderful, um, a sponsor. If you are a um, person who likes to grill. Uh, slow roast, whatnot. Pit barrel cookers are amazing. Pit barrel cookers are amazing. And if you want to, whether you are, um, uh, whether you are uh, slow roasting, like I said, whether you are um, uh, smoking meats, and I, I like to, to smoke meats. Uh, yeah, let's not bring Mika Brzezinski into this. Anyway, um, y- y- you know, whatever. LibertyOneTV.com slash cooker. Pit Barrel Cooker is an amazing product. Noah Glanville has uh, come up with it. He and his wife. Noah's an a, a Army veteran. He came back from Iraq. Had PTSD. A bunch of veterans made barbecue for him. And he said, I'm home. I'm home. I'm home. And he made this amazing company. That's the Pit Barrel Classic. I got one of those. I got a Pit Barrel Junior, too. And those, the food on the right there, I made that. I'm not kidding. I made that. All right? Use my pit barrel cooker. All right. Consider getting one, will you? LibertyOneTV.com slash cooker. Liberty One TV slash cooker. Hey. All right. Let's move on. Oh, let me see here. This is interesting. For those of you who don't believe that tax cuts increase revenue to the federal government, and Many people still don't. Many leftists don't. But it always does because people have more money and they spend more money and they pay more taxes on the things they buy. And it works. Supply side. Federal government took in record taxes in April en route to the biggest ever monthly surplus uh, ever. CBO said. The government collected $515 billion in April. Spent 297. 
A surplus? Are you out of your mind? Yeah, a surplus, guys. Yeah. That was more than $40 billion, more than they'd guessed a less than a month ago. We've had so many things, guys. We've had so many things that have come true. Uh, and should have been fairly obvious, and we keep reminding the left, this is this works. It always works when it's done. It always works when it's done. Cutting taxes increases revenue. Cutting regulation uh, improves the economy. Cutting taxes improves the economy. People get hired, and it's working. 3.9% unemployment last Friday. Lowest unemployment for blacks and Hispanics in recorded history. Where the hell did that come from? Oh, yeah. Thanks, Barack Obama, for leaving office. For leaving office. Lowest rated show on Fox News outperforms the highest rated show on CNN. CNN is effed. CNN is a a gosh darn mess. They are a gosh darn mess. Who's the guy who runs CNN? Is it Jeff Zucker? Is is that his name? Yeah, I think it is. Is, is Yeah, Jeff Zucker. Um... He, um, let me just double check, because I always forget the guy's name. Yes, Jeff Sucker is Homer Simpson. He looks exactly like Homer Simpson, but he's not even smart as Homer Simpson. Do you ever notice Jeff Sucker? You ever seen him? He looks just like Homer Simpson. I mean, perfect. But Homer Simpson would do a better job running CNN. <laughs> he would. He really would. The lowest ranked show on Fox, and then part of this is she's new, and you know, whatever. Fox News at night with Shannon Brain. 1.5 million viewers, respectable, in April. Okay? Um, and that's better than Anderson Cooper, 360. Had an average audience of 1.1 million. He's kind of a big deal over there. 24th among cable programs. Anderson Cooper. Several shows in Fox lineup. Outperformed uh, uh, AC 360 with uh, Anderson Cooper, a- AC. America's Newsroom, Fox and Friends, Outnumbered, which I love. Uh, Your World with Neil Cavuto, Happening Now, Shepard Smith Reporting, Outnumbered Overtime, Daily Briefing with Dana Perino. Where's the five? I like the five. The five is my favorite thing. Love the five. Not a single show cracked the top 20 in total viewership. Hannity top rated in both uh, total viewership, 3.3 million, and uh, among the demo, 2554, followed by Rachel Madcow. She had 3 million. Because a lot of people like to hate. That's why, that's why they like Rachel Madcow. They like hate. They like hate. Oh, I, have, I, I didn't play my Eric Schneiderman um, video that I found. Where he was going off on, let me see if I've got it loaded here. I may not have it loaded here. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. I thought I did. But Eric Schneiderman urged women to end male supremacy uh, at the Women's March. Remember the uh, Women's March last year? This is unbelievable. Are we ready to fight against male supremacy in all its forms? <laughs> this son of a smacking a woman upside the head. Is that male supremacy? The detailed accounts of these women is harrowing, traumatic, and painful. We stand with them to demand justice and accountability. He's talking the hashtag uh, MeToo movement. Unbelievable. What a sycophantic, grotesque human being. Dear God. Dear God. All right. Nancy Pelosi has promised to raise taxes. She made it very fish official at a... Uh, a recent speaking event. Let me go ahead and share the uh, the video. This is what the this is what the Democrat Party is going to do. <clears throat> Here's the promise of the Democrat Party, 2018. Here's their economic plan. It mirrors uh, Roosevelt. It's Roosevelt. It's it's the Great Society all over again. Uh, it is infrastructure projects, government money, government jobs, uh, work actually, not jobs, work, not jobs, uh, and raising the minimum wage. That's what it's all about. Here she is talking about how she's going to raise taxes. New ad that they put out after you um, said you thought you were going to win the majority that says the title was all at stake. It said that you would like to institute a single payer health care program yep. and cancel raise taxes. I think they mean roll back the tax cuts that they passed this year. Is that what do you think of that? Well, that the true? second part there is, is accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I would never smack her upside the head, but I would verbally 
uh, smack her upside the head. I do think that we should re- uh, revisit a tax legislation. Can she talk? Dear God in heaven. In, in the way that we always have, in a bipartisan, transparent way, uh, that the result is unifying for the country. Yeah, um, well, you know, how well has that worked? Should I, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Best month in history for the U.S. budget, April. Donald Trump's tax cuts. I do object to what they did in the dark of night and the speed of light. Like like uh, what happened with the, uh, Obamacare. Christmas Eve, dark of night, we'll have to, uh, you know, uh, pass the bill before we uh, can find out what's in it. Should put forth something that... Uh, uh, gives 83% of the benefits to the top 1%, 86 million. Uh, 85% of the American people are benefiting right now from the Trump's, Trump tax cuts. Middle-income families will pay more taxes in the life of this bill, even though they call it a middle-class bill. Gives a uh, 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 trillion and a half dollars worth of tax cuts uh, to corporate America. Adding- yeah, and then corporate America hires people. Corporate America pays taxes. People who are hired by corporate America pay taxes. Over $2 trillion to the national debt because of the interest on that money. Uh, and it's part of that. God, debt- your, your policies are so broken. You had eight years. You had eight years with Barack Obama in the White House. You had eight gosh darn years. And what did you do with it? What did you do with it, kid? Kid. Jesus. Why did I call her kid? Yeah. Hillary Clinton, uh, I think it was she was jokingly saying that she wanted to leave the country. She said she thought about leaving the country after Donald Trump defeated her, uh, kicked her ass in the uh, in the election of 2016. In freedom, in human rights is so essential. I want to thank some of you for uh, sending good wishes uh, a very long way uh, during my campaign and the months that followed, including Satan. Thank you. Thank you, Satan. I All hail Satan. Thank you. Received um, a number of invitations from Kiwis to permanently relocate here. <laughs> and She's in New Zealand, of course. I must say, I really did appreciate the offers. Um, gave them God, a- please, please move to New Zealand. Some thought. <laughs> but I'm going- okay. It was a punchline. Uh, I wish she would uh, go there with. Um, Barbara Streisand and uh, Rosie O'Donnell. You know, yeah. Barbara Streisand, Rosie O'Donnell. I think so. All right. (sighs) Another sponsor. Another sponsor. You thinking about doing uh, Fourth of July fireworks this year? Check out this uh, this thing here. This thing is amazing. It's called the Firefly. Okay, what you do? There we go. Straighten it out. Is you uh, you plug in this thing to your? Well, you use Bluetooth and you get your smartphone set up. And they have these little uh, these little wires that you connect and and, and uh, clip in the fuses for your fireworks, and these are the big fireworks. And you can do a display, and you can choreograph it to music. You can choreograph it to music. It is absolutely the most amazing thing you've ever seen. Uh, let me see if I've got the um, the uh, the commercial for it because it is just unbelievable, unbelievable. When it comes to throwing an explosive summer party. You're the man with a plan and an impressive amount of fireworks. That's where Firefly comes in, a revolutionary fireworks firing system. That's a fireworks show done right. That's Firefly. Unbelievable. Firefly, absolutely amazing. If you get a chance to uh, to check it out, it, it is it is. Um, uh, I I went to it and I saw a display, um, and it is something else. Uh, we I live in Missouri, and um, so you can get fireworks here. It's it, it's terrific. Okay, so you can get uh, the Firefly and you can use it. Shootfirefly.com. Shootfirefly.com. If you want to order, shoot firefly.com s-h-o-o-t-f-i or you know firefly uh dot com if you want to order this thing it is uh, terrific you can get it on ebay you can get it on ebay all right or you can just go to shootfirefly.com and get that going because i'm a, i'm a i'm a pyro uh, i love i love my fireworks i got a, i got a hell of a display lined up and ready to go downstairs can't wait to get to it
Can't wait to get to it. Keith Ellison, Minnesota congressman and um, a complete leftist, a very radical uh, former uh, member of the nation of uh, Islam. Nobody pays any attention to that, of course. Uh, but he is a radical, radical leftist. He was at a, a campaign appearance in, uh, well, whatever appearance in uh, in Minnesota, where I used to live. And he was wearing a T-shirt. Hello, daughter. How are you? What are you doing? Oh, just forget that I'm on the air here. Thank you. Jeez Louise. Love you too, baby. Love you too. But Keith Ellison, uh, he was wearing a shirt. And this, this is a fine example of what the uh, Democrat Party is all about. I want you to just watch the video. Now, you guys who are just listening during the podcast, I'll tell you about it in a second. <laughs> He's meeting people. Sure. <laughs> he is proudly wearing a T-shirt that says, Yo no creo on fronteras. I didn't take Spanish. I took French in college. Translates, I don't believe in border. Is this, a, is this a surprise? This is the this is the new face of the Democrat Party. This is no borders, guys. No sovereignty. No protection for people who are here, who were born here, and who came here lawfully. No protection. We have two things that unite us in this country, guys. It is it is citizenship and language that's it citizenship and language those are the universal truths of this country and should be is this a surprise chelsea manning former soldier former dude now woman with a penis convicted of espionage for sending classified documents to wikileaks pardoned by barack obama she's running for uh, senate in maryland listen to her his okay her i'll say her whatever her with a penis, whatever. Here's part of her policies. Eliminate natural borders. That's the new face of the Democrat Party, kids. And it used to be kind of uh, incremental. It used to be kind of, uh, you know, it could happen, you know. Well, we don't really, but no, we believe in what it's like. It's like abortion. No, it's, it's we're pro, we're pro choice, you know, you know. It used to be that uh, we were for, they were for, they were for, the, the you know, maybe uh, immigration, immigration, whatever the hell. Now it's wholesale. It, it used to be sanctu- sanctuary, used to be DACA, all that stuff. Now it's eliminate the border altogether. What the heck? What the heck? You cannot have a country and not have borders. You cannot have a country and not have borders. Unless those borders are meant to keep your people in. Like in uh, East Germany, in North Korea. Okay. Here's some of the other uh, progressive, radical progressive ideas from Chelsea Manning. Abolish the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. <laughs> Unbelievable. Restructure the criminal justice system. Well, yeah, of course, with anything like, you know, the VA, the IRS, it all needs to be overhauled. Close prisons and release inmates. That's what they did. That's what uh, the Saddam Hussein did before we invaded the first time. In-state universal health care and basic income. So there you go. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Oh, yesterday I mentioned something. University of Florida faced a black- backlash. Blacklash. I almost said blacklash. Because there was this white dude... And uh, he was on the stage at the uh, graduation ceremony. There were some kids. They were celebrating. They were dancing and all this stuff, you know, and they were taking up time. So this guy, uh, and then somebody had uh, edited this, this, uh, this thing. So it made it look like this, black guy, uh, this white guy was, was hustling black people off the stage because they were doing excessive celebration. He was trying to keep the whole uh, the, the, uh, the graduation ceremony going. Here's the video. To stay put. That is uh, not the because- video. That's Hillary Clinton, dear God in heaven. Here it is. Dave Montpierre, These guys are dancing, and this white guy comes up and grabs them and hauls them off the stage. Oliver, that was mine. <laughs> uh, we have work to oh, do. Oh, God, go away. My- Woman, jeez. But anyway, um, uh, this guy was hustling these people off the stage. Well, it turns out this was this was just a, uh, an incredibly edited tape, and he did this to a lot of kids, a lot of uh, a lot of white kids. 
president went ahead, Ken Fuse, she decided to uh, uh, issue a lengthy apology on Twitter during one of the weekend's commencement ceremonies. We were inappropriately aggressive uh, in rushing students across the stage. I personally apologize and reaching out to the students involved. Few said the practice has been halted for all future ceremonies. We will work to make sure all graduating students know we are proud of their achievements, celebrate them with their graduation. But apparently it wasn't just black students pushed or rushed off stage. There were a lot of uh, white kids. There's another video out there. You know, walk across the damn stage. Just walk across the stage and get your gosh darn diploma. This is, this is classic millennialism. This is classic snowflake. This is classic everybody gets a trophy kind of stuff. Just walk across the stage and get your damn diploma. And if mom and dad are out there going, yay, can we just have some dignity? We do, do we have to do dance? Do we have to dance across the damn stage? I know you know there are kids who do goofy crap. I remember when I was in high school, I probably a couple kids did stupid crap. I don't even remember. But, they, you know, just walk across the stage with dignity. You're, you're supposed to be an adult by now. You're supposed to be an adult by now. So walk across the damn stage and get your diploma. Jeez Louise. Unbelievable. Oh, this is great. New Jersey mom went to her daughter's school, complained about her not making the cheerleading team. What did the school do? One mom approaches the school, says, my daughter didn't make the cheerleading team. Everybody makes the team now. Cheerleader Stephanie Kruger says, all my hard work has been thrown out the window. Because she's mad about it. Tried my hardest now. Everybody, every, everything is going away because of one child who did not make the team and their parent complained. Instead of having tryouts and making cuts, cheer coaches at Hanover Park High School have decided to, te- to let everyone participate. School's athletic director said they changed the policy as a direct result of the mom's complaint. When asked to do away with the new rule, officials threatened to scrap the 10-member squad altogether, telling parents and students that everybody makes the team or nobody does. Unbelievable! I talked about this last night. (sighs) School claims it it wants to make cheerleading more inclusive. Says it plans to stick by the decision. I came up here to state that I did not put in 18 months of work to lead up to this moment just to have it told it doesn't matter anymore. According to Jada Alcantara, who was the kid who didn't make the team, but now she did because everybody does. In response to outrage, the school board released a statement saying in order to facilitate a more inclusive program, the alignment between the various cheerleading squads would be modified to allow all students to be able to participate, blah, 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 unbelievable. Everybody gets a trophy. Everybody gets a trophy, kids. Everybody gets a trophy. What should I wrap things up with tonight? Oh, this is good. (laughs) Another radical leftist, Cynthia Nixon, running for, uh, what, governor. (laughs) She's in sex in the city. Running for governor. And uh, she came up with an idea today, and I I just think it's kind of funny. Um, She says that they should uh, legalize pot in New York and give the black community... Uh, first crack <clears throat> at obtaining marijuana licenses after legalization as uh, reparations. <laughs> this is so racist. This is so just un- just ungodly racist. It's, it's just, un- you know, really, honestly, if we're going to have reparations, I know that black people really like pot and they like to, you know, smoke blunts. Like, I know what the hell I'm talking about, blunts, whatever. The Swisher Sweets, they stuff with frickin' pot. Now that cannabis is exploding as an industry, we have to make sure that those communities that have been harmed and devastated by marijuana arrests get the first shot at the industry. We must prioritize the black community in terms of licenses. It's a form of reparations. Bravo, you you idiotic, insensitive liberal. And this is how liberals treat black people. They treat black people like they're victims. They treat pe- black people like they've never accomplished anything. Uh, they they feel like, uh, I, I'm honestly like toddlers. They, they treat black people kind of like toddlers. Like, uh, like, you can't help yourself, so here's what I'm going to do for you uh, as, a, as a liberal. She said, arresting people, particularly of color for cannabis, is the crown jewel in the racist war on drugs, and it must be uh, put down, and we must pluck it down, whatever the hell that means. 
we must expunge people's records. We must get people out of prison. I'm with you on decriminalization. I, I'm with you on that, you know. <laughs> Al Sharpton said, I'm for legalizing marijuana, and I like Cynthia Nixon, but putting pot shops in our communities is not repu- reparations. Health care, education, and then they're, they're, Al Sharpton, you've been what? You've been an activist for 40 years. Why hasn't health care and education gotten better for the black community? Why in the heck not has it not gotten better for the black community? Should we hear the, uh, the Eric Schneiderman song again? Let's hear it again. The Attorney General for the uh, state of New York. I'm going to play it one more time before we go. Uh, Eric Schneiderman, now uh, four women, and there are six apparently, who are making claims that he sexually abused them, smacked them upside the head, all sorts of things. Here's the new song, Schneiderman, Schneiderman. Enjoy it. Back to wrap things up in a second. Schneiderman, Schneiderman, abuses women whenever he can. Look at Cuomo playing dumb. <laughs> he protected his worthless palm. He should go down with Schneiderman. He Schneiderman should. would like to thank CNN for not mentioning his party affiliation. Schneiderman, Schneiderman, he had a ruin the Donald plan. He got caught with his pants down. Now they've run him out of town. They knew, knew about Schneiderman. Fantastic. He framed man a foot for a 12-year-old crime. Oh, yeah? But he's the one who will be doing time. Schneiderman, Schneiderman, biggest <laughs> pervert in the land. Women want to see him pay. Lock the cell, throw the key away. Look out. Look out. Finish Schneider Man. There it is, baby. There it is. Another swap creature breaks the dust. Yeah, baby. Don't you love winning? All right. I hope you enjoyed that. And of course, we'll be on uh, uh, LibertyOneTV.com. The archives, if you join LibertyOneTV.com. You just want the audio? Uh, just go to uh, iTunes Rob Carson Show. iTunes Rob Carson Show. Okay. If you are uh, watching right now, you'll see above me Patreon.com slash Rob Carson Show. Um, if you can help me out and, uh, and become a subscriber or at least just pledge to the show, I can keep it going because, uh, things are tough. Things are tough right now. And I don't want to have to turn, I don't want to have to plug, pull the plug on this thing. I don't want to have to pull the plug on this thing. Uh, I enjoy doing it. Um, right now we're building it. Terry little page is building it. And, uh, if you could help out, go to patreon.com slash Rob Carson show and pledge me a buck a month, five bucks a month, 10 bucks a month. And I could uh, keep this thing going. All right. In the meantime, guys, God bless you. I really do appreciate it. Look for um, episode number 271 on iTunes of the Rob Carson show. That's what this is. And again, Liberty one TV.com Liberty one TV.com. That's what you need to join. Four bucks a month is all it costs. And we'd greatly appreciate it. God bless you guys. Have a glorious evening and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening to The Rob Carson Show. Friend him on Facebook at Carson Show, on Twitter at Rob Carson, and on Instagram. Uh, I think Facebook and Twitter are enough for now. We'll see you soon.